in Crete, all of these vegetables have a lot of flavor because they're picking a lot of it within 12 feet of the kitchen door. This is an absolutely delicious bite. Every morsel of the chickpeas has deep, deep flavor in it. I really love this dish because it has a ton of protein and yet it's completely vegetarian. You ready? Here we go. You know, many salad recipes don't travel well since they depend on the very best local ingredients. So this week on Milk Street, we want to solve that problem. We offer three recipes that use powerful ingredients to make them shine in any kitchen. Now we start with a simple salad from Crete. This was taught to us by a nine-year-old at her family's restaurant, Tunyas. And then two more recipes, a Turkish chickpea salad, and then a garlicky lentil and parsley salad with feta. Please stay tuned. Funding for this series was provided by the following. That meal. You sauteed, you seared, and you served. Cooking with all clad. Bonded cookware designed, engineered, and assembled in the USA for over 50 years. All clad. For all your kitchen adventures. We are going to go to a small village called Dracona and we are going to visit a small restaurant that's quite special in what it does. So the person cooking in this place is the owner and he encourages slow cooking, which basically means not necessarily cooking in a very slow way, but the idea that, you know, everything is seasonal, you grow your food, you have right. your own animals. It's elemental, it makes you focus on the food. It makes you focus on the food, and it, you have to, you, you devote time. Yasas. Καλημέρα, κύριε Στέλιο. Καλά είστε. Οι άνθρωποι να πάρουν εκεί που είναι από εδώ, άνθρωποι να δουν κουζίνα είναι από εδώ. Εδώ έχω βάλει μαρούλια. Θέλετε να τα δείτε μαρούλια και λάχανα που έχω φτιάξει τώρα. So basically, Anna is in charge of Stelio's garden. Okay. She produces all the food and grows everything for the restaurant. So, ah, okay. so these are the lettuces she's oh, put down. It's beautiful. <laughs> Gosh. Also, because the no So it's like, as you can see, it, it's just really, um, it's just at, at its freshest. So she's got peppers here. Aubergines. Oh, there's a big pumpkin there. <laughs> I might actually be quite excited. I could just go around with her, I think, for the all five days. Ah, come I'm coming. <laughs> Cucumber alert. Wow. <laughs> That's a big one. So this is beetroot. Yeah, and you can eat obviously the root and you can eat the leaf. Look at this tomato, basically. So I think there's a lot of people who would kind of see this and, uh, and go, oh, this tomato is not good. Unless you've eaten loads of these funny shaped, not perfect vegetables growing uh, with no intervention other than water and some just kind of environmentally friendly techniques, uh, you, you don't know what you're missing. Kanu 
Και μετά θα βάλω μυζήθρα, πιπεριά, λιαστές, μπατζάρι. Αυτό είναι ξύδι με πεκμές. Έτοιμη σαλάτα. So the good news is we spent some time in Crete, a lovely place to be, and we had a fabulous salad, a Cretan salad called Dakos. And essentially they put in everything, including the kitchen sink, roasted beets, potatoes, greens, vegetables, cucumbers, tomatoes. And the bad news is, of course, in Crete, all of these vegetables have a lot of flavor because they're picking a lot of it within 12 feet of the kitchen door. You come here and you want to replicate, let's say a Greek salad uh, or an Israeli salad. The produce isn't quite as good. So we had to figure out a way to first simplify it and also add a lot of flavor. So no matter where you're getting your tomatoes, for example, this is going to taste great. So the first thing we start with is a trick. And you can do this anytime you want to serve tomatoes without cooking them. We cut them into six wedges. Now we're going to salt them and let them sit for a few minutes. And what that does is draws out some of the moisture, but it also intensifies the flavor of the tomato. So anytime, as I said, if you're going to serve tomatoes raw, you can use that trick. So we'll let that sit there just while we're preparing everything else. This recipe also starts with something we don't normally have here, which is barley rusk, essentially bread that's been twice baked. So it's very dry. It's good for keeping it around a long time. The reason it's great in this recipe, of course, is because the juices from all the dressing and the vegetables isn't gonna soften the bread. So we needed to find a good substitute for that. So you can take a sourdough bread or a whole wheat bread actually would be great as well. Cut that into cubes. Add a little bit of olive oil to it. We're gonna to toss that around, put that on a baking sheet. We're gonna put this in a very hot oven, 450 for 10 or 12 minutes. Uh, by the way, if you wanna do this uh, for a typical salad at home, you can actually do this in a skillet as well. Let me use my hands, because that's better. So this goes into a hot oven. Meanwhile, we'll do the dressing, a uh, little bit of olive oil, of course. We're using red wine vinegar here. You could use any vinegar of your choice. I prefer a sort of low acid vinegar personally and a half teaspoon of salt and pepper as well. And we're gonna be careful about how much we use of this. So the dressing's done, the bread's going in the oven. We'll be back uh, and finish up our dacos, our Cretan salad. So as I said, we had a problem which was to invent this recipe so it would work with any kind of produce. So you can see we have some powerhouse ingredients. We have raisins, we have sun-dried tomatoes, arugula spicy, feta cheese, olives, and of course our dressing and a little secret ingredient at the end. So let's get started. We have the bread, which has now been essentially dried and toasted. Tomatoes have now sat for maybe 15 minutes or so, released some of their water, and their flavor should be a little more intensified. Onions, half onions sliced across for that, and of course, cucumber, which is in almost all Greek salads. So now we have our dressing, but we're only gonna use half of it right now, and we're gonna dress the salad and let some of that dressing soak into that bread, which has been dried in the oven. So let me toss that. And by the way, when you're tossing salads, um, toss it two or three times longer than you think you need. That way the dressing really coats everything and you end up using less dressing, which is great. Most people overdress their salads. Okay, so we'll let this sit for a few minutes uh, to let the dressing get absorbed by that dried bread we just took out of the oven. We'll come back and finish up our Cretan salad. So the dressing's had a few minutes to soak into the bread. Let's just chop up a few olives. So now we start adding the powerhouse ingredients. Olives went in. Uh, raisins, there's a little bit of sweet and sour together, uh, sun-dried tomatoes, uh, arugula. Now, you can add all the rest of the dressing, or if you're like me, uh, I'm cautious, I'm gonna add some of it, but not all of it, and then I'm gonna toss for quite a while to really get everything mixed up here and coated, and then I'll taste it, and if there's enough dressing, I won't add any more. This looks like it's gonna be enough dressing, I think. Yeah, that's gonna look good. Let me take a little taste. Cucumber. 
Mm. Plenty of dressing. And some feta cheese. In Crete, they have a different kind of cheese. Feta is the closest we can come to that, but it's quite good. So I'll do a serving. Now we have one other ingredient. In Crete, they use a great molasses. That's a very common ingredient around the Mediterranean. We're gonna use something that's a little more available here, which is a pomegranate molasses. You can get that in any supermarket. And what it is is nothing more than pomegranate juice that's been cooked down. It has a little bit of sweetness to it, but it's also sour. It's sweet and sour at the same time. It's often used in the Middle East, for example, with tabbouleh. It's actually used in that salad. So there you have our Dakos salad, our Cretan salad. It's a salad you can make really any month of the year because we have some real powerhouse ingredients in here. And we finished it off with a sprinkle of feta and a little bit of pomegranate molasses. So Cretan salad, any time of year. Today I'm gonna to show you a Turkish chickpea salad that comes via Oslim Warren. Now this is one of a family of salads that is based on raw onions. This one is called Nohat Piazi. Piaz means onion. The first thing that's interesting about this recipe is a little hack that I'm excited to share with you. It starts with chickpeas. I have canned chickpeas that have been drained and rinsed, and we're gonna add a lot of flavor using this technique. I'm gonna start with some spice. This is Aleppo pepper. Very smoky and delicious and a little bit fruity. This is gonna go in. Next, I'm gonna add sumac. Look at this earthy red and it's tangy and citrusy. It's available quite frequently now. If you can't find it, you can skip it. But if you can, I highly recommend it. In goes my sumac. I have here some cumin. I'm gonna add some salt and pepper. And finally, some oil. Give this a mix. And here is the trick. I am going to cover this and microwave it for a couple of minutes. What this is going to do is expand the beans and as they cool, they're gonna absorb all of that flavor. So every bite is going to be super, super flavorful. It's a great trick. So this is all mixed. I'm going to cover this, pop it in the microwave, and we'll be right back. So my chickpeas have been microwaved, and as they cool, they're going to absorb the maximum amount of flavor. So I'm gonna leave them for about 10 minutes to cool and turn my attention to the raw onions. I'm gonna add some garlic here and some lemon juice to mellow out the bite. And in goes my garlic. Give that a stir. So this is gonna sit for a few minutes to mellow while my chickpeas finish cooling. So my chickpeas have cooled, my onions have mellowed, it's time to put them together. So a salad like this traditionally would use fresh tomatoes, but from Musa Dadivrin of Istanbul, we learned a little trick. We're going to use sun-dried tomatoes packed in olive oil. They're toothsome, umami-rich, and they don't dilute the dressing. In those go. Last couple of things, some fresh herbs. I have chopped parsley here. Beautiful. And I'm going to chop up some basil. So my basil is chopped and this is smelling super fresh and delicious. Let's give this a final mix. My salad is mixed and I'm ready to plate it. So here is my salad all ready. I'm going to finish it with a generous glug of olive oil. and a sprinkling of Aleppo pepper.
ready to eat. So here it is, our Turkish chickpea salad. This is a wonderful salad to serve on the side with meats, kebabs, and other rich dishes. And it also makes for a great vegetarian light main course with some warm pita on the side. This is an absolutely delicious bite. Every morsel of the chickpeas has deep, deep flavor in it. I can taste the Aleppo pepper and the sumac. This is a wonderful, wonderful salad. Highly recommend it. Everybody is wrong about salad dressing. I've had this fight for 40 years now about making an emulsion for a French vinaigrette. Travel around the world, nobody else is making emulsions uh, for salads. They might put some lemon juice on greens or a little bit of oil or a little bit of both. The problem is that uh, for some reason in this country, people use, let's say, a red wine vinegar like this. It's very high in acid. It's 6 to 7% acid. And so who in their right mind would want to put a really strong acidic ingredient on tender greens? You don't do that. And the reason you make an emulsion is to take the oil uh, and the water, which is the vinegar, and make an emulsion which sort of softens the blow of that high acidity. Well, the easiest thing to do is not use a 7% acid vinegar. So a good rice wine vinegar, for example, tends to be in the 4% range, or this is a calamansi vinegar made from sour oranges, which has a little bit of sweetness to it, which balances the harshness of the vinegar. So if you use a mild vinegar, you don't need to make an emulsion. Here's what I do. Get a good vinegar, under 5% acidity. And then, by the way, you don't need to use olive oil. Uh, if you go to Austria, for example, they might use grapeseed oil, but you can use olive oil if you like, uh, and then a little, a little more olive oil than vinegar. Now, two other things I like to do, which really makes a great salad. A very coarse salt, like a sea salt, is nice. Instead of putting that in your quote-unquote emulsion, put that directly uh, onto the greens. You get big punches of salt instead of diluting the salt and dissolving it in the vinegar and the oil. Now, the last thing, this is optional, you can or cannot do. I love za'atar. It's a very common Middle Eastern spice blend. It has za'atar in it, which is actually a wild herb, a little bit like marjoram or thyme, and it has some ground up sumac. These are small, slightly sour red berries and some sesame seeds, and put that in. Uh, as you noticed, I put very little uh, vinegar on it and very little oil. And then I also like to use my hands. Now, if you don't take enough time to toss your salad, um, you're not gonna get things nicely dressed. And that's why people overdress their salads. They, don't, they only do this for maybe five or 10 seconds. It may take 30 seconds or even a minute to toss, and then you get a nice even coating. You wanna lightly coat uh, the leaves. You don't wanna drown them in the dressing. So the rules are use a very mild, low acid vinegar. Don't put too much vinegar and oil on it. Uh, use coarse salt uh, right onto the leaves to get a pop of saltiness, which is nice. And if you like, you can add a little sitar as well. Finally, uh, dress your salad and then mix it by hand. Do that for up to a minute so you nicely coat everything nice and evenly. So that way, you never have to make an emulsion again. Today we're gonna to be making a really wonderful main dish salad, garlicky lentil salad with parsley and feta. I really love this dish because it has a ton of protein and yet it's completely vegetarian. So the first thing I'm gonna start doing is I'm going to brown some garlic in extra virgin olive oil. And these are garlic cloves that I have smashed and peeled. And while this is heating up, this oil is heating up, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the kinds of lentils that you wanna use in this recipe. We wanna use a really nice, firm lentil. These are yellow lentils here, and they will definitely break down and turn mushy. They're really wonderful in soups and things like that, but not for a salad. Um, and then there's also green lentils, which are definitely more firm, but you really wanna be careful that you don't overcook them because they can get a little mushy if, if they are overcooked, but you can use them in this recipe. And then this is our preferred lentil. This is a French lentil or a lentil de puy, um, and they're really small and they're nice and firm and they really hold their shape well and they're really wonderful for this kind of um, preparation. I'm gonna go ahead and check on my garlic. Just give it a little stir. We don't wanna burn them. 
Okay, so this garlic looks great. It's starting to brown on the edges. It smells amazing. I'm gonna add ground cumin and a little bit of cloves. This is gonna add such a nice flavor to the lentils. You just wanna cook it for about 30 seconds until it's nice and aromatic. All right, and that's it. And now I'm gonna add the lentils. These have been rinsed and drained. And then I'm gonna add a bit of kosher salt. And then four cups of water. Okay, so they come to a boil. I'm gonna go ahead and put a lid on the pan. I'm gonna reduce the heat to low, and we're gonna let these simmer for about 30 to 40 minutes until they're just done. Okay, so these lentils are done. I have drained them and I'm gonna let them cool to room temperature. They're almost there. And as you can see, the garlic basically just broke down right in there and the flavor is gonna be nice and muted. It's not like you're gonna get a bite of like really sharp garlic. And you wanna make sure that you give it a couple of fluffs to kind of break up the lentils while they're cooling. I'm gonna set those aside. Okay, now I'm gonna make the dressing. I'm gonna take one lemon. And what you want is about a quarter cup of lemon juice. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pour the lemon juice over this bowl here. I have two shallots that I've sliced nice and thinly. And the reason we're doing this is the acid from the lemon juice helps to mute the sharp onion flavor. So I'm gonna give that a little stir. And then I'm just gonna let that sit for a few minutes. And while that is sitting, I'm gonna go ahead and chop an entire bunch of parsley because that is a main ingredient in the salad. Okay, so this doesn't need to be super fine. It's kind of nice to get some larger pieces in the salad. Okay, so now I'm ready to assemble all the ingredients and finish our salad. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add the parsley. This is great, this makes it so nice and fresh. Okay, I'm gonna add the onions and the lemon juice. Another thing I love about the salad is you don't have to make the dressing ahead of time on the side. Everything just mixes together in the bowl. It makes it nice and easy. Add a little bit of salt and some pepper. And I'm gonna add a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. And then we're just gonna toss it together and that's it. Okay, so I've transferred the salad now into a bowl, serving platter. I'm just gonna add the feta on top, which adds a really nice sharp bite against the nice aromatic lentils. And then I'm just gonna drizzle a little more olive oil. And that's it, we're done. And we're ready to eat. I'm really excited to try this. And make sure I get lots of nice shallots, lots of feta, there's so much parsley. This looks great. Mmm. Lentils have perfect texture, have a nice bite to them, and they have so much flavor from cooking with all that garlic and the cumin and the cloves. And then you've got this nice sharp bite from the lemon, this nice brightness, and the shallots. So this is garlicky lentil salad with parsley and feta. It's a wonderful salad that stands on its own as a main dish and also works great as a side. And it's really, really easy. You can get this recipe and all the recipes from this season of Milk Street at MilkStreetTV.com. All episodes and recipes from this season of Milk Street Television are available for free at our website, MilkStreetTV.com. Please access our content, including our step-by-step -step recipe videos, from your smartphone, your tablet, or your computer. The new Milk Street Cookbook is now available and includes every recipe from our TV show. From fried shrimp tacos and Thai-style vegetable stir-fry, Mexican chicken soup, and Swedish cardamom buns, the Milk Street Cookbook offers bolder, fresher, simpler recipes. Order your copy of the Milk Street Cookbook for $27, 40% less than the cover price, and receive a Milk Street tote with your order at no additional charge. 
call 855-MILK-177 or order online. Funding for this series was provided by the following. That meal. You sautéed, you seared, and you served. Cooking with all clad. Bonded cookware designed, engineered, and assembled in the USA for over 50 years. All clad. For all your kitchen adventures.